So uh, our text is Joshua uh, 3 and 4. So what will be a forerunner of the text is, is that um, in the book of Deuteronomy, just before Joshua, um, Moses has, um, uh, has passed on his leadership to Joshua and then went on and separated himself from Israel and um, has passed away. And um, this is Joshua's first enactment, uh, enactment of leadership here. Um, we can see in, um, in verse 7 of chapter 3, the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that you may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Um, and so this is the, the first, um, this, is the, this is where God says, basically, I'm going to glorify you and um, show the people of Israel that you are a leader um, and you are one that can be followed. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I have a, there's a broad, broad amount of text here. Let's start in, um, uh, verse 14 of chapter three, and we're going to read, read through the end of chapter four. So when the people set out from the tents to pass over the Jordan, the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and as soon as those bearing the Ark had come as far as the Jordan, the feet of the priests bearing the Ark were dipped into the brink of the water. Now the Jordan overflows all its banks. Throughout the time of harvest, the waters coming down from above stood and rose up in a heap very far away at, a, at Adam, the city that is besides Zarephath and Zarethan, sorry, and those flowing down towards the Sea of Ara and the Salt Sea were completely cut off and the people passed over opposite Jericho. Now the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firmly on the dry ground in the midst of the Jordan and all Israel was passing over on the dry ground until all the nation finished passing over the Jordan. Chapter four, when all the nations had finished passing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, take 12 men from the people that each tribe a man and a command them saying, take 12 stones from here out of the midst of the Jordan from the very place where the priest foot uh, feet stood firmly and bring them over and you will lay them down in the place where you lodge tonight then joshua called the 12 men from the people of israel whom he had appointed a man from each tribe and joshua said to them pass on before the ark of the lord your god into the midst of the jordan and take up each of you a stone upon his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the people of israel that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come what did the stone mean to you mm -hmm. Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, of the Lord. And when it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. And the people of Israel did just as Joshua commanded and took up 12 stones out of the midst of the Jordan, according to the number of the tribes of the people of Israel, just as the Lord told Joshua. And they carried them over with them to take place where they lodged and laid them down there. And Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan in the place where the feet of the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant had stood. And they are there to this day. For the priests bearing the Ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to tell the people according to all that Moses had commanded uh, Joshua. Uh, we're gonna end there actually. Um, let me just pray. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Um, Heavenly Father, Lord, I, uh, uh, I think you have put this word upon my heart, God. Um, Lord, I pray you anoint it. That it not be my words, but your words alone. Um, bring clarity of what I'm supposed to say and how I'm supposed to, um, um present it, God. Uh, and let your words speak louder than any any other my voices, God. Mm -hmm. um, Lord, I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. um, so I was excited about this. Um, I do get to name it, and I was like, oh, what am I gonna name it? Um, and I think this this message is called the power of thankfulness. Mm -hmm. Um 
So reading what we read, I want to open up with a quote um, from Pastor Tim Williams, who's a teacher um, at Summit. He was, the, um, he was the pastor over Summit for, I think, 15 or so years. Um, and um, he teaches the spiritual formation class, Institute class, and the Gospels class. Um, and he said this in a spiritual formation car, uh, cl uh, class, saying, a grateful heart opens the door to God's storehouse. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. That's tough. I'm going to build on that a little bit later, but I want to build on the text and, and exactly what's happening here. Um, if we take it this face value, they cross the Jordan, they grab a bunch of stones, <laughs> and they put it up in a pile. Okay. Um, but there's so much more um, behind what's happening here. Um, this is a, um, they set up what's called a memorial, um, which is something to remember. Um, and um, Joshua, I think he understands um, the weight of what just happened. Um, and so, um, you know, um, he's so eager to do what God told him to bring stones from, from the place where the miracle happened, um, mm. outside, um, as a memorial to remember. Um, mm. and he understands the, uh, the power of thankfulness in this scenario. Um, at this point, Israel has spent 40 years in the desert. Um, and I think Joshua knows this, he knows his history. Um, Israel had the same type of miracle with the Dead Sea or the Red mm -hmm. Sea, sorry. Mm -hmm. And um, and they still they were thankful for a time, but then they came back to complaining. Mm -hmm. um, and then that made them lose 40 years, you know, wow. inevitably. Mm -hmm. So Joshua is coming in with this weight of God just did this for us again. Mm -hmm. Am I gonna repeat what my ancestors oh, did? Wow. Mm -hmm. Um and so he understands the weight of, of what he's carrying, the responsibility he has. So he's eager to um, command and, and do this exactly as God has told him, to bring um, things to remember from the miracle mm. itself um, to remember. And so I want to go into why is he trying to remember? What is, he, what is this remembering supposed to do? Um, and the truth is it's for thankfulness. Okay. It's to be thankful. Okay. Um, so the question is like, why should we be thankful? Um, and, um, uh, thankfulness is one of the most important things in our Christian walks. Mm -hmm. Um, thankfulness is worship and really it's at the heart of worship. Um, I think to a certain sense, you cannot worship without being thankful to God. Mm -hmm. Um, Hmm. Um, Colossians 3 15 through 17 says uh, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts uh, to which indeed you are called in one body and be thankful that the word of Christ dwell in you richly teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom singing psalm and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in the hearts of God. And I read this in a different version. Um, is uh, Colossians three fifteen? I read this in a different version, um, and I can't remember. I can't phrase it exactly, but it, it was of something of um, let thankfulness rest in your heart. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think this is a key thing that we need. Um, if we are to worship God fully and wholeheartedly, um, we need to have thankfulness in our heart. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why I do this, but it just seems to be my style. Um, when I write things, I ask questions um, to the audience, to the reader. And I wrote here in my notes, um, what has he saved you from? Mm -hmm. How thankful are you for that? Mm -hmm. Are you thankful? How have you been kept? 
So um, again, referring back to Israel, they were thankful for a time when they crossed the, the Dead Sea. The Red Sea, sorry. One of the Red Sea. Thank you. Um, and um, they were thankful for a time, but then they started to complain, um, which is the opposite of thankfulness. Um, it is, uh, you know, it's, um, it's a disease um, and it will cause issues. And, you know, if they were just complaining, I don't think um, God was not irritated with just the complaining. He was irritated with the complaining and the heart condition of that followed with the complaining. Um, and um, so the question is, how do we keep ourselves in a state of thankfulness um, and away from complaining? Are you going to be thankful for a time just to slip back into complaining? How intentional will you be to keep a heart of thankfulness? Um, I want to say also that, that thankfulness often creates a soil that is hard for evil things to grow in. Oh, that's good. So when you are thankful, um, you cannot be complaining. When you are thankful, you cannot be in fear. When you are thankful, you cannot be um, in, in, in things where, where um, that just uh, corrupt us and, and slowly de uh, deteriorate our hearts. Um, okay. So Romans 1. This is going, I'm building off the... Um, the opposite of thankfulness. Mm -hmm. 118. <clears throat> For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Suppress the truth. Oh, this is new right here. When we are not thankful to ourselves, we are lying to ourselves. When we are not thankful to God, we are lying to ourselves. And complaining is just suppressing the truth. Oh. Oh. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, has been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to, be, to, claim, claiming to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal men and birds and animals and creeping things. That sounds like Israel when they were um, complaining. Well, while we might not be as serious as Israel today, we still have the same heart when we complain. We still have the same heart when when uh, we we strive differently other than thankfulness. Um, so it's so important to be thankful. Um, but it's also so hard to stay thankful. We have so many things in our life that, that drag us down. My car didn't start today. <laughs> There's a huge line at, at, at the coffee shop. I got sick today. i um, not doing good at work. And it's so easy to forget what God has done for you um, and be thankful for that instead of focusing on what happened today. <laughs> And um, it's something that we need to overcome. Mm -hmm. If we go back to the text of Joshua, we see in the text, um, he gave us a, an example of how we, uh, how we should work, uh, how should we live um, to keep a state of thankfulness, a position of thankfulness, mm -hmm. which is he set up a memorial. He brought a memorial of what God had done for him, something that is 
not just um not just a thought right it's a physical adamant object mm -hmm. that every time he looks at that he has to remember what god had done for them um and um So, whereas I don't know that today we need to go and collect some, collect some rocks and put them up in a memorial. Maybe you do. Maybe you do need to do that. But I think we all need to come up with a memorial of what God has done to not forget. Something that is visible, um, maybe not with our own eyes, but something that is visible and recognizable um, and can be kept in our lives. Um, to remember what God has done. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I do this, but um, I just want to give a minute for you to just pray and think about what is that memorial going to look like for you? What are you going to remember from 2022 that is going to keep you thankful throughout 2023? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um To build on that, that quote by Pastor Tim, thankfulness is a key to open up, um, you know, a key to open up the storehouses of God. Um, he explained that this means that, um, now there is a verse to go, this is, I did not grab it, I apologize for that, but um, he explained that, that if you were looking for something um, from God, the best way to achieve that is to be thankful. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not like a formula. You can't just be like, well, I'm thankful for this and I'm thankful for that. Now I get this, right? Mm -hmm. Right. No, mm -hmm. it's not a formula. Right. But when I want to take an example, um, so my dad would buy me Lego sets <laughs> when we went to when we went to stores and stuff like that. Once in a while, I just get a random Lego set. I look back on that and I'm like. Would you give me a Lego set if I was complaining the whole day? Would you want to give me a thankful a Lego set? Mm. No. But if I was thankful for what happened today and I was just happy being with you and doing your your errands and and thankful for going along and thank you thankful for the lunch you gave me um, and the time you spent with me, then you're gonna be like, hey, I want to give him a um, a gift. I want to give him something. And um, that's the same way our Heavenly Father looks at us. Now, you can't take this as a way to manipulate God. Right. It's not going to happen. Amen, amen. Again, um, but it's, it's when your Heavenly Father looks upon you and sees, he doesn't just see what you say, what you think. He sees your heart mm -hmm. and your motives and your desires mm -hmm. and what you're truly after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if those are aligned with what his amen. will is, mm -hmm. he is going to abundantly pour out the blessings of his storehouse, yeah. Yeah, joy, uh, um, joy, a uh, uh, peace, yeah. self-control, the fruits of the spirit will be all yours. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If you have a truly thankful heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's good. So what does a truly thankful heart look like? Well, we said that um, <laughs> thankfulness is at the heart of worship. Um, it's a heart condition. Mm -hmm. It's not what you say, the actions you do, the things that you think, or the what you might even look upon, right? It's, it's, it's the heart condition that is inside of you. Um, and so 
we said worship is um is 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 thankfulness thankfulness is the heart of worship so true thankfulness can be viewed by god through a precious true real worship um and when you truly worship you will receive um the presence of god the power of god the peace of god and with that follows true contentment because once you're in a place of worship where you can actively sit in the presence of god and praise him for who he is you're not going to care about what's happening in the world you're not going to care about about the struggles that you had yesterday or five minutes ago you're only going to care that i am praising my god who is my king my father my love my my friend and my um my god amen and with that will follow contentment right wow and being contentment can being content um You are unstoppable for the kingdom of God when you are content. Amen. Because when you are content, that is because you are fully satisfied by only God. Amen. Um, and then with content comes true faith. And again, when you have true faith in God, the one who keeps you, the one who leads you, mm-hmm. the one who guides you, uh, the one who loves you, you are unstoppable for the kingdom of God. So again, that goes from, from true thankfulness Mm-hmm. comes true worship comes true contentment uh, content comes true faith Amen. Um, so if you are looking for something today um from god patience one of the fruits of the spirit something like that peace joy um mm-hmm. You need to start with a grateful heart. Okay. You need to open up your heart um, and, and ask for a heart condition to change in you. Um, ask to be changed. Because um, it's not something you can do in your own strength. That's right. You need to ask God to, to make you um, to make you someone who is thankful. And, and a real thankfulness for God. Mm-hmm. Philippians. Fortunately, I cannot repeat this verse verbatim. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. <laughs> Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything be by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. Let's let's tear that apart real quick. Um, do not be anxious. Don't be fearful about anything. The dry cleaning, the dog, um, my haircut. <laughs> but in everything, by prayer and supplication. So that's that's praying to God. That's spending time with Him. That's talking to Him, and supplication, um, and then Thanksgiving. With Thanksgiving. It's filling your prayers with with thanksgiving. It's thanking your God for what He's doing in your in your um, immediate life, your past life, and what He will do in your future life. And let your requests be made to known mm-hmm. to God. So a lot of people they're, they're, they they read this and they just skip through it and they say, "Don't be fearful. Um, just make your requests to God." But we skip over the work, the things that follow it. You cannot have one with the other. This is um, an if then statement. Okay. So you cannot have one without the other, which is that praying with supplication and with thanksgiving. So it's praying to God with thanksgiving, a heart that is changed and thanking him for what he does. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. That does not follow without you praying Mm -hmm. and also giving thanks to God. Mm -hmm. Um, which again falls down to a heart condition. Um, you cannot achieve this on your own. Mm-hmm. Don't even try. Mm-hmm. But if you really want it, um, go to your quiet place. Mm-hmm. Go to that secret private place that you go to find God. Um, fall upon your knees and, 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 and ask him. Do it. Mm-hmm. And he will answer you and he will meet you. Um, Mm 
Thankfulness doesn't only just open the door of God's storehouse, but it also opens the doors of your heart. Mm -hmm. And really, I think about it, and I'm like, the sinner's prayer is a prayer of thankfulness. And it's a prayer of faith, but it's also a prayer of thankfulness. It's thanking God for what he did for you. And while the, the new believer might not fully understand that at that time, I think every, every believer should, um, once he's been, you know, uh, in the word a lot more and, and becomes a lot more mature, should look back on the prayer that he said um, and view like that that prayer was a prayer of thankfulness. And that should propel him to continue with his walk with Christianity um, and, and in God. Um, so falling back to that verse, um, you know, do not be anxious about anything with prayer and supplication, let your request be known to God and, and the peace of God, which, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and the minds of Jesus Christ. So I like to say that, that thankfulness, even for the mature Christian is still needed. Mm, yes, um, amen. and even more so because to get into the deeper parts of your heart, you will be stuck in a position of 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 uh, like permanent stall if you are not thankful mm. you will not grow mm. in christ and Amen. if unless you are thankful for Amen. what he's doing good word mm. you will not grow you're wondering why you don't read your bible you're wondering why you don't pray it's because you're not having a heart of thankfulness of what he's done and he's not giving you the power to strength it to continue it and, and mm. grow deeper so what happens is when you are thankful, you slowly, it's not just one door to your heart. There's many doors in your heart. It's like a house, right? Mm -hmm. So as you are thankful, you're thankful that your, your guest is here. Your king is here Amen. and you're opening more doors. Amen. And as you do that, the Holy Spirit, like it says in this verse, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and minds in Christ. And I could add, goes into your heart. Mm -hmm. So if you're not thankfulness, if you're not thankful, you might have God in your living room, but you don't have him in your bedroom. Mm -hmm. So open up your door. I'm serious. Go to your quiet place, fall upon your knees, cry before your Lord and ask for him to tender your heart, to make it gentle. He's only knocking. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's not commanding. He's just knocking. Not even asking. Just knocking. And it's and it's it's your choice. One hundred percent your choice. Will you let him deeper? And um, we're uncomfortable to do this by two things, which is mainly just shame and guilt. Um, there's there's no shame and there's no guilt in the body of Christ. He loves you. So why not let him in deeper? Amen. Um, falling back to that monument. Where is your monument in your life? Will it be at your will it be at your door front? Will you look at it every time you leave your house? Will you look at it every time you open up your Bible? What will keep you in a state of thankfulness? What will position you? To continuously be thankful. Um, maybe it's multiple things. I know for me that, that um, I had to write um, an essay for uh, Christian theology. It was a doxology paper, and I wrote it on the um, aseity of God, which is the, the definition of that, that God exists with no other source but himself. He is fully self-sustaining. And I see this as, as this is my monument. I have to remember this and I have, and then it just Amen. makes me, it, 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 the, the hardness of my heart is, is softened. And I remember why I should be thankful because the reason I am still here together right now, like my atoms, the atoms of my body stick together is only because of God. He's keeping me in a state of life right now. Um, it 
this memorial is not just for you. That's right. It says that um, so yeah, here we go. You are the only witness, you're not the only witness of what God has done for you, but heaven also. So be thankful. Um, heaven is watching you, you know, uh, as well. Um, and um, I have another point here. I don't, I don't think this is very strong. Psalm 7, 17. I want to go there real quick. I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord the Most High. He's due. I'm sorry, did you say Psalm 17? 717. 717. Thank you. He's due. He is due thankfulness. We owe him thankfulness. Um, really, I think what propelled this was um, thankfulness just spurred up in me when I was writing that, that, that paper on Sadie. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's when you understand that, that God was fully satisfied with just himself. He had no need. He had no want. And yet he still created out of love. How does someone who wants nothing like still create something? There's no point to create it. But he did it anyways. And he gave it even more. He even gave more a purpose. So I should have, who am I to not thank him that the reason I exist was because of his love. Mm -hmm. Not that he needed me, not that he wanted me, but because of his love. I, I can't get around that. We were created to thank God through worship and can't worship God without thankfulness. Okay, back to the point. Sorry. Um, the another thing is is that you know heaven is watching us. Yes, I don't remember the point. I was there supposed to go there. Um, but also, a memorial of thankfulness is not just for us. Right. Yeah. It's for our kids. Amen. It's for the people around us. It's Amen. for the, our parents. It's for the people that see us. Right. Excellent. So make it visible. Make it visible to others, not just you. So people could ask you, what's that on your wall? Or what's that in your Bible? Or why do you ever, why do you always say that saying? You know, make it personal to whatever will make you remember how to be thankful, especially in this year of 2023. Because mm -hmm. um, that's an evangelistic opportunity as well. And, and, um, mm -hmm. and let me tell you that Dr. Dan in his classes, he has, he's very key on, on generation, um, uh, I don't know, I guess, theology, I guess. Um, he looks at the Old Testament in a way of generations, and, and he thinks, um, well, he doesn't think, he, like, it's, he, he um, brings an importance and a weight to generations. He's, um, urging us to take um, the seriousness uh, needed um, when you're dealing with generations. He's, he's trying to prepare us. He's like, you are not just going to affect you and your kids. You are going to affect everyone below you. Your legacy. Your legacy. He starts us off with that your testimony doesn't start with you. It starts with whoever was the first Christian in your generation and mm -hmm. led down to you. Wow. Um, and I honestly want to say, I mean, when, when there are Christian generations that are not thankful, mm -hmm. 
you don't see much fruit in your life. Mm. Mm. So there's an importance mm. to having thankfulness in your generation for, for years to come. But how can you best do that? And, and Joshua explained, uh, shows us how to do that is with a memorial to remember. Um, and so, again, I urge you to think of the importance of having a memorial and what that's going to look like for you and your family. Um, uh, just wanted to, there's the last ending note, really. If you do not thank God, who will? And if you're not thanking God, who are you thanking? Yeah. This is a way that, that, that evilness will and can come into our hearts, mm -hmm. even when we are, you know, following God, reading our Bible every day, you know, being that holy Christian. Um, if we're being thankful, things can slip in. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're not being thankful. Amen. And I urge you, if you are not thanking God, you are most likely thanking yourself. Mm -hmm. And that means that you're going on to rely on yourself. Mm -hmm. You're working in your own strength mm -hmm. and that will not get you very far. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's really all I have for today, but I have a plan for this as well. Um, I'd like to read Psalm 100. If you're struggling to be thankful, what are you going to do? Will you just sit there and wallow and just say, you know, well, I don't feel like I'm being thankful. I don't feel like, or, and if you know your heart is not into it, what are you going to do? Are you just going to say, well, I tried, move on? Or are you going to do something like that? <laughs> Pick up your word. Pray the psalm into your life. Um, and rely on the body as well. Call up your friends. Mm -hmm. Call up the people who love you and say, hey, I'm struggling to be thankful. I think we are, we are, we, we struggle. Um, maybe I don't, I don't think this body is much, but a lot of body, a lot of the body of Christ struggles to call each other and, and ask for help on the simplest things, but it's the simplest things that sometimes we need the most help on. Yes. And so again, the things that are keeping there, uh, keeping us there is the shame and guilt, but there is no shame and guilt in the body of Christ. So open up your phone, open up your mouth and pray and call the people that love you. Um, and create a uh, creative community where you can be Thankful, and then you can pray for thankfulness. A song for giving thanks. Make joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Mm -hmm. Amen. So these verses are, are, are uh, verse 3 and verse 5, they're, they're ways to also position yourself mm -hmm. to a state of thankfulness. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and that's a good point as well. If you are not feeling it in your heart, remember it's not a feeling. Um, remember that emotions and feelings betray us. Um, but if you do know that your heart is not in the right position um, or is, is not in the right um, attitude, position your heart to get there. Don't just give up. Um, I wanted to, I felt it on my heart that I probably thought um, a month ago, thought probably I would end pretty early. And um, so I had, a, I had a, a thought that I feel like I would put my ideas just, um, I wanna just have 20 minutes of just prayer and Thanksgiving. We're just gonna just pray um, all together. And I encourage you to raise your voices. Don't be, don't be shy. Um, it's you and your God. We're not listening to other people and what they're saying, but raise your voice. Um, and then after, I just want to pray over each other. I want to lay hands on just each other. And let's just pray to strengthen the body um, before we leave or before we go in our time of prayer. Um, I can say refuge. I'm very thankful for you guys. Um, I know you guys pray for me, and I, I, I really value it. I really value it. I know that, um, I don't know, mom Mom told me that, um, Kai, you're praying for me a lot, and uh, I can't tell you what that means to me. I cannot tell you what that means to me. I was really hoping you are going to be here, because I want to give you a big old hug. Um, but yeah, I, I am telling you, I'm so thankful for this body. But um, yeah, so I'm just going to close this out, and then uh, I I don't know if we can just stand, uh, do whatever feels comfortable, and then just uh, can we just raise our voices um, to Heavenly Father and thank Him for the things that He's done this.